giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. I'm here with First Capital RI3D. So we're going to update you a little bit on our progress so far. Um, mit by mit, here is uh, Jess. She's going to bring in the chassis that we've got so far right now. It's vast majority here. It's made of VersaFrame from VexPro. We've got the three SIM uh, VexPro ball ball shifters here, as well as the mini uh, three mini SIMs per side here. Um, it's going to be a super fast drivetrain, super reliable, used by many top teams last year and beyond. Um, it's going to be a super effective drivetrain for us here going into this build. Um, we're finishing it up pretty quick, so uh, they're going to go back to work with that here. Anyone, feel free to drop questions, and we'll be showing this throughout the rest of the stream. Do you have anything to add, Jess? No, it's going great. Uh, <laughs> all right, awesome. Um, so yeah, I wanted to go through that one really quick because they're hard at work on this one. We really, we're working really hard to get the drive done tonight. Um, Griffin, you want to come in here and talk about our, uh, one of our other prototypes? Sure. Uh, this was one of the first ideas we had for uh, how to pick up the hatch panels. Uh, so uh, the hatch panels attach to the field uh, using the uh, Velcro hook and loop on them. Um, and so we decided to try to exploit that. Uh, so on the other side of this piece here, we have hook Velcro. Um, and using our simulate game piece here, um, if you simply come over to the game piece, push down on top of it, lift up, and now you're attached. Um, I don't have the compressed air hooked up right now, um, but uh, underneath of the hook straps here, we have two pancake pistons. I have air now. Okay. Let's try that again. And then if we actuate the piston. Echo, echo. And that's because we don't oh. have air to oh. the solenoid is why. Hey, there it is. <laughs> um, so uh, we're using these pistons here to uh, eject the hatch panel uh, off of the pickup. Um, so if if we have this attached, we can run over to... Um, any of the spots on the field that accept it, um, trigger the ejector pins uh, that should leave the robot and stay attached to the field. Um, really simple uh, way to pick up the game elements. Um, I think it might work. Cool. Um, is Richard about this? Well, um, oh, you want to go ahead uh, here, Michaela? Could you talk about the intake that we've got right now? Can you, do you mind repositioning the camera real quick? Yeah, thank you. Nah, but we can just kind of show. Uh, so, um, this is our intake mechanism. You can come in, Richard. Um, we, it was kind of the first thing we thought of. It gave us a little bit of 2016 vibes. Flex wheels in the middle. Uh, Vex flex wheels and Animark Omni wheels on the outside, and so this, <laughs> yeah, so it um, is powered like an overroller, and so the ball gets sucked in um, using those rollers, and it is centered pretty well, especially when we have our corral in the back that is meant to center the p the game piece so that it is ejected straight um, when. Uh, we're trying to score it. Anything else you want to add, Richard? Okay. So I'm going to pass it over to Dahani. There you go. Um, so I'm going to pull up the camera. So my name is Dahani. i um, from 2590. Uh, I've been working a lot on the CAD. Um, so as you can see here, 
Um, we have the drivetrain with the eight traction wheels. Um, as you can see, we have a single stage elevator with um, some sort of um, four bar mechanism to be used, um, which would be attached to uh, the intake that uh, we plan on doing. Um, that, so that's the CAD so far. All right, Andrew and Anna are going to come up here and talk a little bit about what we're doing programming wise right now. Sure. So uh, we've just been working on framing out a lot of the code since we don't have uh, any hardware to play with yet. But uh, we're trying to get everything in a state where once everything's together and wired, we can just start tuning controllers. Um, the end goal is doing uh, acceleration limited uh, motion profiles on all of our uh, actuators, like on the elevator and um, like four bars on the elevator if we end up going that route. Um, yeah. That's, okay. Well, Ben's not ready for me yet. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and then also we're going to try and implement um, some basic autos and keeping keep everything so it's relatively copy and pasteable. Um, so you could copy and paste our implementation and tune it on your own robot without much stress. All right, thanks, Andrew. A um, couple other things just to point out that uh, about what we're planning right now. We'll see if it stays that way or not. We are using the six-inch Vex Pro uh, traction wheels right here. Uh, is our current plan? We're planning to put eight of these on the robot. Then we've got the Andy Mark elevator kits. We're looking right now at you doing a single-stage elevator with the four bar. It should work pretty well for that. Um, so we've got the. We're looking at similar to the. Um, this is the elevator from 225's uh, practice robot uh, from last year. So we're looking at using uh, similar elevator kits, except we're using the HD version. Um, so anyway, that's uh, that's what's coming. Um, what what did you uh, want to do next, Tyler? You said. Uh, well, we do have a giveaway to start. Uh, so let's uh, let's do that in just a moment. So get ready for the giveaway. Uh, while we're doing that, why don't we take a couple questions uh, from Heather, then mm -hmm. just repeat the questions, make sure Jack can hear them. Got it. Okay, so the question was, what is our wheel choice for the drivetrain? Um, our choice is the 6-inch VEX Pro traction wheels for our drivetrain. We think that this will be a great application, especially when you're traveling on the HDPE and you're trying to climb over um, onto the step. That will be very effective for that. Yes, we are going, what, yes, uh, okay. The question is, what is our motor choice for our drivetrain? So we're going with six mini sims on the drivetrain. This is a tried and true implementation used by many FRC teams many for many years there, including 225. We did it last year here, and so it's something we know very well, and we will implement uh, very well for this RI3D. It's a great choice for many teams themselves when they build their robots. Our current plan for the end game is well. We're, we're it, it's a little bit a little bit up in the air right now. But the current approach that we're going to try to do is push our gripper onto um, both types of steps and just make sure that we've got eight wheels on the drivetrain to apply to plow ourselves over it. We'll see if that works or not. We've got a lot of testing to do, so that's our current plan right now. Why a four bar elevator instead of a two? Yeah, the thought with the. Oh, the, thank you, Tyler. The question was, why a four-bar elevator instead of a two-stage elevator? The, the main reason is the four-bar provides a lot of uh, applications for when you look at, say, the, uh, the rocket ship where you have to push out a little bit away from your drivetrain in order to push the, um, uh, push the hatch panels onto it. Uh, it, it's very useful for, for that particular application. Also, it lets you stick out a little bit from the drivetrain so you can, say, have your overroller pick up stuff easily inside the um, uh, whatever that corral is called where there, there are 12, six balls on each side. Um, it's very useful for that. So there's a lot of applications done for the four bar. It does make it so you can't really play defense by pulling balls from your opponent or anything like that, but um, it does have a, a bunch of applications which would be great for teams that want to specialize in making sure that they can score game pieces on their side of the field. It's also uh, it's a lot more work to do a two-stage elevator. So doing a one-stage is um, is good for us. Otherwise, we'd have to add another mechanism anyway to push things out. All right, so I want to hop in here for a second, Ben, because we do have some giveaways. Now we're not giving away this many bad hawks, 
But uh, our friends over at 1720 Fixed Gears have graciously donated a pair of these. You can pick these up at anymark.com. If you're not familiar with these, I'm going to show them, and I'll show them a little bit closer too. These things are absolutely incredible. You plug them right into your battery. Let me tell you what the voltage is for it. You see how many this team has? This is a championship <laughs> team right here. So if you don't have any of these, you got issues, right? So if you're interested in winning this right now in chat, I want you to type in blast off two words, blast off, B L A S T space O F F. I hope my spelling's correct. And with that said, if you are interested in winning this, you have to make sure you click that little fall button near the top of the screen. And don't forget if you do choose to subscribe, you'll get five times luck to win. So we're going to draw for that in a few minutes, lots more questions to come in, but I want to interrupt, make sure we're giving these away. Thanks again to 1720 for being a great sponsor and donator of first updates. Now, speaking of which, uh, while we're doing plugs, yeah. I mean, you guys got a lot of sponsors going on for this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave. But uh, talk about some of the uh, obviously some of the suppliers. We talked about Animark and Vexpro and Rev uh, a little bit, but who else is doing it? And then uh, if you don't mind talking about some of the components you got from our sponsors too. Sure. Um, so some of the other great sponsors that we have, we have uh, one of our local sponsors that we have here is Penair and Hydraulics. They sponsor us with uh, a number of things around our particular shop. Um, we have pneumatic components, AD20, uh, things of that nature. So you see some little AD20 standoffs on a drivetrain there. Stuff like that comes from Penair for us. Um, we also are sponsored by the um, – Donnie, what, what, what's, the, what's their name? The York one. Yeah. I want to make sure I get this right. Thank you. All right. Yeah, we've we've uh, we've uh, the York Tourism Board has uh, has uh, this is we're in York, PA. That's why we're called First Capital um, uh, RI three D. I know it doesn't mean necessarily as much to everyone in First, but it um, it means a lot locally for us here. So. Um, the York Tourism Board is uh, is generously sponsoring us here, and uh, and so we've got some some locals watching as well. So that's really cool. Um, we our building itself we're sponsored here by Coupling Corporation of America. That's the our workspace that you see around here. They generously provide us with the space, and uh, we even had the CEO of the company stop by and check to see what we were doing. It was really cool. Um, and later on, if we get to see our practice field, depending on how things go, um, they're sponsored by Paragon Engineering Services. They're uh, uh, a little bit north of here, that's where we have a practice field. So, um, anyway, just to call out a bunch of our great sponsors, including uh, also uh, Tyler Olds and First Updates Now. We're super glad to have him here. Um, and obviously, Rev, Andy, Mark, and Vex. So, it's, uh, it's great. We, we love the opportunity to show these, um, you know, many different parts that we're showcasing here to, um, you know, to go through some of the supplies that they've given us here. Rev's given us many brushless motors and, um, and spark maxes. Andy Mark's generously provided elevator kits, uh, compliant wheels, Omni wheels, uh, some walnut extrusion, uh, and the game piece actually that we have here. And Vex has provided us with many, many drivetrain components and some flex wheels. So, um, it, it's been very great to have all these sponsors on board. Uh, Tyler, how are we doing over there? What do we, uh, what, what do we got next, or do we have any more questions? A lot more questions. A lot more questions? All right. If anyone else wants to jump in, too, to answer questions, I don't have to be the only talking head. Yeah. Yeah. Do we plan on using Vision? You want to answer that? All right. So for the time being, we're thinking that the primary um, assistance that we're going to use is IR sensors for the white, uh, white tape on the ground and not really think too much about the vision targets uh, above the hatch covers because it doesn't seem all that worth it for the complexity, at least in three days. Uh, so that's, that's the current plan. Next question. Yeah. Uh, do we think we'll be able to make it to the top stage with just wheels is the question. Uh, so I'm going to assume that means using just the drivetrain uh, <laughs> and no other components. Um, we definitely haven't come up with any way to do that. Um, I'd be very impressed to see it if uh, someone is able to pull it off. Yeah, we'll see how far we get pushing our gripper down and seeing if it, if it pushes us up, if we're able to get the wheels over. What's the, any, what's the next question? Why eight wheels instead of six? Yeah, I, I would say we went with eight wheels instead of six because it to makes it more likely that we might be able to get the drivetrain to get it over with with eight. So there's less gaps and things that we have to worry about. So that's uh, that's kind of what our target is and why we're sticking with eight wheels. 
Yeah. Next. The question is, how high do we plan on climbing? Um, well, our plan is to get to the top, but with the current configuration of our robot, I'm not sure if we're going to get there. Um, we're going to try our best and maybe put some uh, extra mechanism on the back to try to achieve that goal. Yeah, we'll see how high we can go. What's the next question? All right, have we been able to simulate the hatch? We actually are able to show you this here right now. Could someone spin the camera? Yeah. So um, we have a bunch of parents of TechFire 225 helping us build field elements. And so we asked for the first thing that they built to be a hatch, um, saying that it's made of wood and by some uh, like parent carpenters, it's not perfect. It doesn't seem like as easy to pull them off as in the video, but as you can see, it it works. It, like it seems to work at this point. So um, we're sticking with our design. It, it's it's been really reliable and really simple to make and to manufacture. So um, and we know we are coming up with ways to make it even better. So it's it's going to mature and evolve and. It'll be good. Uh, next question. What well, for why omnis and not mechanum for the intake? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Um. So we chose the omni wheels instead of the mechanum wheels, mainly because we didn't have mechanum wheels that were small enough to. Uh, fit our configuration that we had in mind. So um, that's basically it. That's that's the biggest reason why. We just didn't have small enough ones. Yeah, and also the uh, the Omni wheels work great with a, a backstop, something like uh, that's at a 45 degrees right here for pulling things in just as well. So these, uh, these Omni wheels are a great solution for teams that want to pull in a game piece um, and then keep their profile small, uh, pull in the game piece and center it at the same time. Next question. Is the drivetrain a drop center? Yes, the drivetrain is drop center. <laughs> uh, well, the... The question was, is the drivetrain drop center? And the answer is yes, it is. Uh, yeah, we're using the uh, Vex Pro uh, Versa blocks. Yes. Yep. Um, so those have uh, an integrated drop center. Uh, they're offset, so you just flip them one way for the middle wheel, flip them the other way for the outer wheels, and you have a drop center. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, the, the question was uh, why VersaFrame and then also was the kit of parts chassis discussed. Um, we, we chose VersaFrame because it's a great solution to have many customizable drive options. You can kind of put your wheels wherever you want. You, uh, it's easy to attach to. It's really easy to pull, the, put the wheels on and remove them. And also being 0.1 thick, it's a great application to last over 150 matches with a successful drivetrain um, just fine. This TechFire's robot from last year here is in the background. That robot lasted over 150 matches on the same VersaFrame chassis plus countless hours of practice after the season. This is, you know, all the way through November. So the stuff is pretty bulletproof and pretty strong there. We didn't choose the kit of parts chassis because we actually don't have one, too, here. Uh, it is, so it wasn't even an option to be discussed uh, to one sense, but we are big fans of, uh, of using the West Coast Drive style here on 225. And, uh, you know, when, you know, talking to our colleagues here at 20, 590, they agreed that this would be the best choice for us to take for this particular build. It's also, um, the VersaFrame is also really easy to put together and to um, customize because we're using uh, gussets and rivets, so you can put it together with those rivets, and then if you need to, you can drill them out and move the, the, the bars that go across really easily if, if need be. Yeah, we are assembling the. Uh, the question is, excuse me, sorry. Uh, the 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 question was how um, how are we assembling the chassis? And the answer is we are assembling the chassis with rivets. Yeah, what's that? 
Yeah. Uh, for 225's competition robot, we actually weld it instead of doing the rivets, um, and that's to in increase the rigidity and also decrease the weight slightly. Yeah. The question is, can we show how we get the game piece off the Velcro for the robot? Something I just want to mention, by the way, we do have a uh, YouTube video uploaded of this, so you can check it out at youtube.com forward slash first updates now uh, of this process. So if you want to see it over and over, go check it out there. <laughs> yeah. And just an announcement for everyone, we will be uploading many informational and instructional how-to type videos for the work that we are doing here as a team. So check those out on First Updates Now's YouTube channel. Are we all good to go? Oh, you uh, need to flip them. Oh, did it? Yeah, can you swap these, Christian? It is off. <laughs> yeah. Yep, so we, can you hold it up please? So we have uh, two ejector pins here. They're uh, these uh, small pancake pistons. Um, actually, uh, they're the same, the same pistons uh, that the shifter on uh, the Vexpro ball shifters use. Um, and they're just functioning as these small ejector pins in order to uh, push the polycarbonate piece uh, away from the Velcro. Seems to work pretty well. Next question. The, the question was, um, are we going to have issues putting the hatches on the cargo ship? Looks like a pretty precise target to hit. I know we've had discussions about this, so I figure. Yeah, um, yeah we discussed a lot about the alignment issues we're going to see. Um, the tape is only uh, two inches wide on either side of the target, um, so it's, it's quite a small area to hit. Um, we're planning on having some vision aids using uh, the vision targets on the ground to try to help us out with that. Um, and our uh, strategy for picking up and uh, aligning with the pieces when we go to pick them off the, up off the ground or if we're getting it from the human player station, um, we're kind of still in development on that part. Uh, but we definitely recognize it's going to be difficult. Next question. Yeah, the question is, is our manipulator, does it have enough force to stick it onto the Velcro on the ships? Um, the answer that we have to that question here is we're still developing a ship. However, uh, we are actively in development of that type of work. It ejects great so and detaches from the gripper great. Um, so we're, we're obviously still working on retention and stuff to some extent because, you know, if you wave the robot around, you can drop Velcro maybe. But everything's constantly in development. It's only day one, folks. So we're, we're still working on some of this stuff. Hey, Ben, I want to jump in real quick. Uh, we're going to do a stick to be my assistant for a second. You can hold that. So, yep. uh, so we're going to do the uh, drawing giveaway in just a moment for the Bat Hawks. Once again, if you haven't had an opportunity to enter, it's going to be blast off is what you need to type in the chat. Make sure you click the follow button up there, or if you choose to subscribe, you're going to get five times luck. I do want to read off, by the way, I, I know this is mid-roll for us, but we've had a lot of great support today, not only from our sponsors and suppliers, but from you, the community, which is what First Updates now relies upon to provide independent, free content to you. And thank you very much to those who have stepped up. Uh, of course, my main man, Donnie, who's in the room right here, has been a huge uh, supporter of us. Thank you, Donnie. Mick Glass with a Tier 1 sub uh, and uh, even and a Prime sub, a doubling up there. Big Spuns, 23 months straight of support. That's what I'm talking about. Travis 48 with a Prime sub, a Shano 45, five months of support. 13 Spangs with a Prime sub. Uh, 4 Andrew 3 wl with a Prime sub. Uh, Gridell, Indy Sam, Forrest Gray Prime subs. Withholding allowance with a Prime sub. Brando, 17 months of support. Pokegamer2 with a Prime sub. Uh, FunFTC, Nathan, nine months of support. And a few others that I know that I miss. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Every little dollar, every bit, no matter how big or how small, means the world to us to provide you our independent content that we can. We rely upon you. Thank you, community, for doing that. With that said, let's do a, a drawing here and find out who's going to win. Awesome. And by the way, GMR, uh, 
0405 just gave a sub, and then uh, ah 23 subbed as well too. So. Uh, so the winner of that is going to be uh, Ishano, 45. Congratulations, you won the Bat Hawks from 1720. Congratulations to you. Shoot me that PM, and we'll get you that info. So we're going to be going for about another 20 minutes here uh, with uh, questions, and then R3D is going to be going through midnight tonight Eastern. Tomorrow we're going to be at uh, back here at about 930 in the morning Eastern, running all the way through midnight mm -hmm. as well, too. Monday, same Nowadays. thing. I know, right? 50, yeah, because we're getting here at 9. Uh, we are going to have an RA3D recap show tomorrow at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern once again, so make sure you stop in for that. We'll also have a couple other check-ins during the day. And then on Monday, uh, recap at 9, 9 p.m. Eastern on Monday. And then Tuesday, if you can make it during the middle of the day, you're going to get to see the reveal. But let's focus on tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. Eastern until midnight Eastern. Can't wait to have you back here. Let's get back to some more questions, Ben. Awesome. Yeah. Any, uh, any more questions, Heather? Have we talked about what we're going to do with cargo? Michaela, do you want to take that one? So we're planning on having the overroller manipulator on the four-bar arm that will be on the elevator. And so we're planning on just being able to kind of spit gently <laughs> um, into – so we're not throwing, we're not – tossing, we're really trying to be really precise with it um, and make sure that um, it lands in the the chutes and in the, the ship when, when we need it to. Um, yeah. We just got yeah. our chassis, our drivetrain actually. It's just not hooked up with electrical at this point, but it has everything on it now. Go ahead and talk a little bit about it, uh, Jess Kirsten. You know, talk about what we were working on in the other room. I could talk. Yay. Uh, so basically, when you saw before, and then what we finished is we were, uh, had to make all the chains and then put them on. Um, luckily, we were smart this year and decided that we are going to put all the cam holes on early instead of having to figure out where to drill them, which was really nice. Um, that made our lives a lot easier. Um, and then we worked on putting all the bearing blocks on and the wheels and figuring out the spacing for the spacers, which I still think that needs to be adjusted a little bit, but that's with after you put it together something you see because um, the chains are slightly curved, but I think a 16th here and there will be fixed. Um, and also like tensioning the chains because they're a little tight because it's the four wheels. So that's sort of what we were working on. Anything to add? <laughs> All right. Um, just it's it's a constant work in progress, everyone. It may look slightly different tomorrow. You never know. Um, any more questions from the stream? Do you plan on doing the highest level of the rocket first? Yeah. The question is, do we plan on doing the highest level of the rocket? The answer uh, for both cargo and for um, placing the um, – placing what are those called? The hatches? Thank you. I was – for. Yeah, the pancakes. Yes, the pancakes. Um, yeah, yes, we plan to go to the highest level. Uh, the question is, do we expect a defense-heavy game, and is that why we uh, implement a shifting gearbox? I would say that we implement a shifting gearbox because there's always a reason in almost every game that you have to push past someone, and future-proofing your robot with the ability to go into low gear while still being able to be in high gear for the vast majority of the time is almost always a good idea for the majority of teams. Not necessarily everybody, but for the majority of the teams, it really future-proofs you in case you need to play defense for some reason. The question is, did we consider a mechanum drive? Uh, our answer is no, we did not consider a mechanum drive. Yeah. Yeah. The the question more questions about level three about how we plan on getting there. Um, for those who tuned in earlier in our stream, our plan is to use a single stage elevator with a four bar currently. Things are always open to changing, but that's that's the current plan. Um, if someone wants to wheel in the um, last year's two two five robot. Yeah, basically this with a different gripper and single stage is kind of the uh, the current approach as far as um, how we're planning on uh, lifting the stuff up to level three. 
the question is, what do we think high level autos will look like? Um, you know, what I, I'm looking at back in the back of the room, checking to see what our our programmers are saying. You want? No, I don't want to comment. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I would I would say that there's been a lot of mixed feelings uh, around here with uh, with the auto side. There's probably not quite as at first glance. There's not quite as many opportunities um, to go for big score like there was with the scale and stuff last year, where it really got you an advantage. Um, we we at least on our current thought. Um, there, there's a good shot that we just make try making the sandstorm period autonomous with like be, being an a stop button where you can basically take control and uh, do stuff on the robot after that just because you can really step through everything nicely but you know we really don't know right now we have to analyze everything more and uh, it's hard to give a good concrete answer on that one right now The question is, why do we choose these traction wheels? Again, we believe that these uh, Vexpro traction wheels will be a great solution to climbing over the different uh, to the different levels, especially like level one, being able to just uh, get over that hump there, provided we can just lift our drivetrain off the ground a little bit. So we think that these wheels will be a great choice for that. The question is, does someone else want to take this one? Just go, no, yeah, sure. Um, so the question was, do we think it'll be easier to obtain cargo from the human player station or from the depot? And we didn't talk about it a whole lot. We kind of just talked about our, our bot being versatile and being able to pick it up from anywhere. So um, it's really nice that the ones in the depot are stationary and we don't have to worry about them bouncing around and stuff like that. But um, I think that our robot will be able to pick them up from anywhere pretty easily, so it doesn't affect us too much. I will say one of the reasons that we go with things like an overroller is if you look back at 2016, picking up the balls over the top of that little berm that was around in the secret passage, it was really hard if you didn't have like an overroller. Like with the, the 225 robot, if you look up in the in the corner here, we can point the camera where... Uh, it was side wheels for the ball here. Tyler's moving the camera. Where where it was side wheels to pick up the ball, it was much more difficult, especially when you were containing the ball and running into the berm and everything. So it, it just is very effective to do an over-the-top roller for, uh, for balls in many, many games, especially when you've got this big barrier that's sitting in the bottom. The, the question is, are there any plans for lifting the drivetrain up? Um, so we've talked about a couple of things where we had talked about um, maybe our arm being able to lift our robot up, but we don't want to put too much torque on the arm that it bends or anything like that. And so we've also talked about putting a separate mechanism on the back that would be purely for lifting our robot. Um, one of our first designs was having an arm on the front and on the back um, and having one of those dedicated also also dedicated as uh, along with being a game piece manipulator to also be able to lift our robot up so there's a lot of different things like come flying around right now that we're trying to figure out um, which one would be the best the question is any choice on motor and gear ratio for the elevator our, our current plan is to use the rep brushless motors for the elevator um, it, it, uh, it should be great um, it, we're going to you try to take advantage of many of the advan advantages, excuse me, of using the rep brushless motors for just, um, you know, trying to use this new motor to move our arm up and down and uh, possibly even do it with our four bar as well. Um, we really like to try to implement the uh, integrated encoder on that. We'll see if that happens or not. Um, you know, if not, you know, we'll we'll find and figure out another solution for that. But uh, we really we really hope to take advantage of that on the rev brushless motor and try to make a really simple integrated solution for bringing the um, bringing the elevator up and down and bringing the uh, the arm up and down. Yeah. Any more? Yeah. Yeah, the the question is, uh, do we think we can safely come down from level two at the beginning of the match? And the answer is yes. 
Yeah, I don't really have any further details on that one besides um, we haven't put too much thought into that, but it's not that far of a drop, so we're not worried. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't I don't have anything else. Does anyone else have anything else? No. Well, thanks, Ben and team. And, guys, we can't wait to show you even more what's going to be happening with this awesome robot in three days. So make sure you stick around and check it out. It's going to look probably just like this once it's done. It says nobody in the background. They're horrified faces that they have. Uh, but we can't wait to show you what's really going to happen. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe.